Okay, well, uh, this is the unwrapping of the, the Raspberry Pi kit, and if you're watching this, it's because you've got one of these and you want to know what to do with it. And so this video is just to go through uh, everything that's in there. Um, hi Mike, thanks for helping with this. Let, let's, have a, let's have a look and see what, what, what we got in here. Go through everything. So there, there's the Raspberry Pi itself. And uh, let's take everything else out and have a look and see what we got. So let's just empty everything out. Cables. And there we go. So first of all, the Raspberry Pi. What have we What have we got there? Then? Well, let's uh, let's open that and have a look and see what we got in here. So here's the Raspberry Pi, and wrapped in its anti-static wrapping. So you need to be handle it really with the metalwork because they are a bit sensitive to static but so there's the Raspberry Pi itself we've got connections as you see on here the Ethernet and then four USB which allows you to connect a, a keyboard and a mouse and something else if you wish and then on this side there's the HDMI for the video and the power connection and here underneath is a little SD card connector which we'll get to in due course so that's the Raspberry Pi so, so so this, this, so the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've just been looking at the specs for this. This is a 1.2 uh, gigahertz, 64-bit quad-core processor, which is fairly amazing. But this, this also has on it uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and Wi-Fi. It's got a Wi-Fi chip on it, uh, and it's got a, a gig of RAM, which is quite extraordinary storage, as well as these four USB ports, which will be for the the keyboard and the the mouse and that sort of thing. So it's, it's an amazing machine, isn't it? It certainly is. Yes. Very powerful. So then, in due course, we've got a, a case for it as well, which you may not need in the first place. But so if we take that out, then we've got the case here, okay. and then sort of top there, there, which allowed it to do it. And in the side here, you can see a base, and then in, and that will actually fit. So you see the Raspberry Pi fits inside that which is quite neat but in the first place you probably won't want to use the case it's only when you've got a project that's up and running and then you can put it all neatly in a case so we'll put the case to one side for the moment and try, uh, uh, so sorry. we've got the Raspberry Pi and just in passing we'll mention we've got the, min the SD card which you've got the operating system on it so this is a micro SD, micro SD, tiny, SD thing, tiny thing. Uh, right, and that, as we as we saw later on, will just plug into that socket on the back of the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So that's the Raspberry Pi and the operating system. Well, and then we've cool. actually got the Ed EduKit, and this is version two with the sensors in it. And you can look it up on their website, and they give you a reference to the website there. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So we open that up. And then first thing on top here we see the temperature sensor which which will be a thermistor, a variable resistor which is temperature dependent and you see three wires there to connect it up to the Raspberry Pi in due course. So that's the temperature sensor. And this is this is waterproof as well so perhaps we can it, use it, it in water as well as yes, in, in the air. Yes, it is, isn't it? A stainless steel and a nice length of, connection. Uh, a nice length of cable with that as well. Yeah. What else we got in there? So then we've got the breadboard to connect it together and the instructions in the EduKit are very clear on that. So you can see basically you've got power rails top and bottom and then connections in the middle there but later on we can talk about how to connect that one up. So this is for connecting all our components up? Yes. And linking to the Pi. Right, what else we got? So the um, th this is a sensor, the a heat sensor that can detect people in the, in the area is the sort of thing you have in a, in a burglar alarm so that looks out there and then there's three connections to connect that up to the Raspberry Pi and various other components to allow you to adjust the sensitivity of it and, and so on so when you get around to using that there will be more instructions on how to use these different things but okay. basically that's the motion sensor 
and then we've got two different color LEDs. We've got a, a red LED and a blue LED and in the worksheets it explains that the lengths of the lead of the, the leads of those are two different lengths and these things have to be connected in the right polarity so the positive one goes to the long lead and the negative direction goes to the shorter leads but again we'll so see I'm that good. more when we connect the thing up so there's two LEDs different colors there. It's important to get that the right way around then. That's right. Okay what else we got? And then we've got a little buzzer here with two leads and again you'll see the leads on that are different lengths and again the positive lead is the longer lead um, and when you finish soldering it in you can take this little adhesive lap flap off the top too which is just to protect it. I guess we can use that with the breadboard. That's Indeed uh, we can well. yes. So that's okay. That's this there and then the, the, the other sensor that we've got, the third sensor we've got is a light sensitive uh, resistor here and you can see that with the sort of little zigzag connections on the front of it and so that's just a resistor but it's it's light dependent so the vary the value of the resistor will depend on the amount of light falling on it so then what have we got in here we've got a number of connection leads and those can be used for connecting things on the breadboard that we've got there so some of those have pins at each end for connecting on the breadboard and some have yes. some will have sockets on it which has fit onto the uh, like these white ones which can connect onto these pins here so you'll see two different types of that's it. connections so uh, those oh, great so that goes there and so on so we'll see that as we get to to use the various sensors okay. so you'll need those leads as you build the circuit on the breadboard what else we got in there? Then we've got a couple of resistors. The LEDs need to have a resistor to limit the current and you need to read the color codes on these and these are actually 330 ohm resistors which give you about the right current for an LED and, the, and those are you can just about the colors are quite difficult to see but it's orange, orange and black so it's 3-3 three, three, and then an O. So that's 330 ohms. So it doesn't matter which way around these are? No, that's lighting. correct because they're, they're just a resistor. And then there's a, another higher value resistor there for use in other parts of the circuit. So that's a 4.7K. And then we've got an electrolytic capacitor, a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And again that's polarity de dependent and it's you see it marked on the side with that white strip down the side there shows with the negative side of it so that has to be connected the right way around so again the different lengths of the lead yes. by the look of it and, the last thing and then finally we've got some a terminal block for connecting well, power that, or the that, connections that, like that, like that or whatever yes, so those, could, those could go in there so yeah. and then that'll go into the uh, the breadboard as well by the look of it for yes Looks as, it, looks as if it would. Yeah. So that's a handy, handy little setup. So that's bits there. Okay, so uh, let's just put those to one side and have a look and see what else we've got here. So there's a couple of cables here. There's a standard, standard network cable. So, um, but actually, as we, as we said, the Raspberry Pi has got Wi-Fi built in. So once we get the Wi-Fi working, perhaps we won't need this, but that, that comes with the kit. Um, but to get the thing working, we also need um, to connect up a monitor. So there's a this is an HDMI cable, isn't it? So we've got uh, either end of those or plug in, and the, there's the socket on the end of that. Okay, great. And lastly, the power socket, the power kit. So if we just open that up here, it looks like we've got a few connectors for the different power systems around the world. There's the, the Continental power socket, and um, it looks like it's got the UK, the UK socket is already uh, on it here. Okay, what do we got? So there's the uh, the micro USB connector there, and that's going to go onto the Pi in the in the power socket just there when when we turn it on. So that's the power, and uh, I guess what we got to do now is put in the uh, put in the, the little uh, micro SD card and, and pop it into the case. So let's try let's try that. 
So is it is it right to touch these? These you have to be a bit careful of these, I guess. Yes, yeah, you need to be a bit careful about the connect the uh, connectors. Okay, so I think we can hold it there. I'm not touching the the plates, and, and that that's going to go in. Where are we? Underneath. Sort of underneath. Oh yes, there we go. The smallest of things. So probably that way around, I guess. Not the easiest thing to fit in there. I think yeah, actually yeah. it's the other way around, doesn't it? That, that makes sense. There we go. So that, that just slides in and makes a firm connection. It'll only go in one way, so yeah. you don't, don't force it and it'll fit. Now then, where's the, uh, where's the case? Let's have a look at that case. So I think what, one thing is the, the, the SD card is sticking out ever so slightly. So I think with this, one has to sort of lever it. There's the back of the case, and one can sort of lever that through underneath, just so that it doesn't it doesn't uh, hit as you put it in. So you sort of lever it in, mm. and then there's the base in there. It just pops on. It's not the easiest thing to put on a case, is it? <laughs> no, no. And there oh, we go. There we are. Perfect, perfect job. So, so what have, what have we got there then inside? So, uh, if you have it like that, then you can access all these connectors in here, and you'll see some other connectors in the Raspberry Pi that we won't be using in the first experiments. But there's one here for a camera, which will take a little flexible cable, and another one here for a display. Um, but we'll be using the HDMI thing in the, in the first instance. And these pins here are the general purpose input and output pins. And those are the ones we'll be using with these, you know, with these flying leads that we've got, which we can connect up to the breadboard. So in the first place, you probably don't need to put the, the lid on because you can't connect those very easily. But once you've got a project up and running, then you can put a case, you put the lid on the case and it's all wrapped up safely. So if we, we were just using this, say, as a database server or something like that, then we could easily just put the lid on and connect to it with the Wi-Fi, but if we want to use the breadboard and these sensors, then we've got to connect to these pins you're, you're saying there. Yes, yes. Great. So that's, those are the bits. On to the next bit. <laughs> How to use it. Great, thanks very much.